God, thank God for all of our live stream people, whether they're members at home and in other states around the world. We get the letters. We have an expanded audience. I mean, we surpassed the subscription of just our YouTube channel way back almost a year ago, over a thousand. It has grown, and I don't know, they ain't giving me the latest numbers, but I just go by. Uh, God expanded this signal, and people that we've gotten letters from, yeah, actually other countries with invitations to come preach. And so you never know whose life we are affecting. So thank God for the nucleus here, you that are faithful in your tithes offering to help us go into all the world and preach the gospel. Always keep a worldwide vision. We just don't want to win a local championship. That's good when you win the, you know, the county or the state, but thank God we want a world championship. Amen? Expand your vision. Amen. Bring other people in your circle of love. There are other people that are going through things that need to hear the gospel who would love to switch places with you this morning with the problems that you think you got. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So those of you who have your Bibles, open with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. I'm teaching from the subject, Overcoming the Fear of Failure. Overcoming the Fear of of failure. Now, we're going to get a good, simple definition. We know the opposite of failure is what? Success. No one starts a business. No one um, goes to school. No one gets a job. No one enters a marriage. No one does anything expecting to fail. But we're going to find out that, that before success, there's, it's always been failures. And failure don't have to be fatal. Just because you fail don't mean that you have to be fatal. Matter of fact, I'm going to get my couple of my, my nuggets out, what I call kitty nuggets. I'm going to do them, just going to throw them out there. The first thing you got to understand is that, uh, you know, failure is an event, not who you are. Right. See, sometimes when we have fails, well, I'm a failure. Uh, I, I started this and it didn't work. Or, or I, I, you know, got a house and, and we, it went back. We fell. I bought a car. Now, that was an event, not who you are. We, we define now, so the devil will try to define you by event. And there you got to separate your faith from failing. God never fails. Simon, Simon, Satan desired to shift you like wheat, but I have prayed for your faith that it fell not. Many times I faith myself, but you are not a failure. It's just another opportunity to start over more intelligently. Amen. Matter of fact, your failures teach you way more than your successes. Amen. You are smarter now than you've ever been. Because right. you know what not to do. You know the people not to talk to. You know how to identify this and that. What well, you've learned through your failures because it caused you pain. When you're having success, you don't think about nothing. All you don't know, money's coming, anything. You don't even think about prayer. But as soon as you hit that tough spot of crisis and there's failure and it causes you pain in your home or marriage or your finance, then you don't forget those lessons. You learn much more. So you don't have to, you can overcome the fear of failure. Failure is not who you are. It's an event. You move past that event. And fatal Failure don't have to be fatal. Some people, oh, I failed, so it's over. My life, no, it's not. Pick yourself up. We all have made mistakes. We learn from them. We move on past that event. Hallelujah. We never quit. We understand that at the end of God is success. And just because I had a temporary setback, that don't stop me. I keep on coming to church. We as Christians, every last one of us have failed in something, but we are here this morning because we know that God, at the end of God, there's always going to be success. So, but people fear failure. And I want you to see from the scripture how to overcome that. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made just a little lower than the angels. That word angels is translated Elohim, which means God. Jesus wasn't lower than angels. He was a little lower than God. Amen? Amen? He was made a little lower than God for the sufferings of death. And we're going to 
talk about this word death because we're going to find out that death literally was failure. <laughs> For the suffering of death, what did he do? He was crowned with glory and honor that by the grace of God he should ta taste death for who? Every white man? Every Italian man? Hispanic? Korean? German? Every man. This thing was for us. So there is no excuse about your race and where you come from. And I was born here. Jesus tasted death for every man. Put this up in Amplify and then we're going to. They need to see this, this particular verse. But we, but we are able to see Jesus who was ranked lower than the angels in a little, for a little while, ground with glory and honor, that because having suffered death, we know that death uh, is not just a succession of, of life when we lose our breath. Spiritual death and separation from God. Jesus paid the price. He bore our sins, sicknesses, disease, everything in, us, only in our body. And he said, don't kill them, I'll die for them so that they don't have to be separated from God. You remember God told Adam the day that you eat of this fruit, you shall surely what? Die. Well, did he fall dead time he ate of the fruit? No. He was talking about spiritual death. It's going to do something on the inside of you. It's going to separate. But Jesus came and bridged the gap for the sufferings of death. Hallelujah. And because having suffered death, in order that by the grace of God, unmerited favor, God to us that he did it for us sinners. That he might experience death for every individual person. Care who you are. Your race, creed, background, color, denomination. Jesus did this for every individual person. Now, let's go back to the King James and let's look at verse 14. For as much then as the children were partakers of the flesh and blood, you and I, human beings, he also likewise took part of the same that through death, we write back to death again, he might destroy him that have had the power of death, that is the devil. Through death, he destroyed him that had, he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from Satan. He took our place, he paid the price, he defeated sin, sickness, demons, and fear in the pit of hell. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And the Bible says that had the power of death, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Keep going. And deliver them. It was for you and I who through fear of death, we're going to find out that word is just failure. While all their lifetime, hold that right there, subject to bondage. Fear of failure, fear of death. Hmm? When Adam sinned is when death and the law of sin and death came on this planet, did it not? The ground began to fail, did it not? He said it won't, you, you won't, you won't just by the, by, the, by the sweat of your brow. Their health fell, their security fell, everything fell. He was talking about fear of death. All the plants, all the trees, everything is subject to death. That's why nothing lives forever. It was all, no animals, a curse came on this planet. So he's talking about not just the, the physical part of death. He's talking about the fear, everything that death brought. It brought failure. Adam fell in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said that God, he paid the price for death so that we don't have to spend the rest of our life fearing failure, sickness, disease. Correct. All of that came as a law of sin and death. Let me ask you this way. <laughs> How many different ways can you die? You let, let, me, let me help some of y'all. Correct. Starvation? Can you die by starvation? Okay. Can you die because you have financial ruin and you don't have any money and it destroys you? Yeah. You got no money, you can't live. Huh? Heart attack? Liver? Failure? Huh? Stroke? I'm just talking. Bit by a snake? Poisonous? All of that came when, see, I'm trying to show you. He ain't just talking about failure. He's talking about failure. Everything began to fail. Someone say, well, how did he die? 
Was it heart failure, liver failure? Well, it all failed. When you dead, it all failed. Ain't none of it working. And he says, I don't want you for a heart attack, strokes, this, snake bites, this, that. Through death, he took all of that failure and he, he destroyed him, paralyzed him. That had the power. Satan was taking us straight to him, killing, stealing, and destroying. He broke his power to deliver you who through fear of failure all of your life subject to bondage. Fear will put you in bondage. What if I lose my house? Failure. What if my marriage break up? Failure. What if I die on a car crash? Failure. What if we get on a plane? Failure. All of that came as a road of what? Death. And he said, I don't want none of that put you in bondage. So I'm going to go on the cross and break the power of the devil and take away the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So you don't have to worry about failure or fear of failure. It is going to be more plain from the Amplified. Now, we've already read verse 9, so just give me 14 and 15. Since therefore, see Jesus, oh, he's so good. In his humanity, he said, now, I understand that they've been tempted. All this stuff came as a result of Adam's sin, so i got to become like them. To be a faithful high priest. So since therefore the children share in flesh and blood. He in his physical nature of human beings. Being in the physical. He himself. said, I got to come and be. I can't just be like Adam. Formed from God. I got to come through Mary the womb. And put on a flesh. And the word became flesh. Y'all with me? I want you to understand this. He himself. In similar manner partook of the same nature. That by going through death. Death. He died as a born again man. He was the first born of my man. God didn't die. God can't die. Jesus became a man. He was all God, but he was all man, so he had to come over on the outside to experience death and failure. And he said, by going through death, he might bring the knot and make of no effect him. He did it because the devil was sending people straight to hell, was killing, still in his story, that had the power of death. That is the devil. Watch this. I love how the Amplified put this. And also, this is why he did it. That he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of failure. You get it now? It's man, when you hear death, just, uh, no. It all, when Adam and Eve committed that sin, it all fell. The ground went for the, it was a curse. Everything bad. That's why the Bible talks about even creation itself is waiting for the manifestation of the sun. Do you know that the trees would, wouldn't die? Everything was supposed to live. Animals die. Everything have a life, a time. So it all began to fail. But he says, you know what? I don't want you to fear car wreck, sickness, disease, bit by, none of that stuff. That don't mean that there won't be opportunities to fail. It just means you don't have to fear it anymore. Because the thing you fear the most will come upon you. Through fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their life. There are people that won't even attempt to believe God because they're afraid of failure. There are people who won't even attempt to believe God for healing. What if I fail? There are people who won't even attempt, praise God, to work on a job or to go and get another promotion because, man, what if I can't learn the computer? What if I, what if, oh, what if I, what if I start a business and all of it, fear of failure. So when Adam sinned, failure came on the planet. Do you understand what he's talking about? He's not just talking about the fifth. Of course, 980 years later, Adam and Eve died. But everything failed that day. And the devil tried to tell you, you're going to fail. But he just told you he did it to deliver you so you don't have to spend the course of your life waking up wondering, am I going to die? Is a car wreck going to get me there? Is a stray bullet? Is my child going to be invincible? They going to have an active shooting there. All of that stuff came as death, murder, rape, drive-by shooting, gang shooting, all of this mass shooting, all of this disease, AIDS. COVID-19, you don't have to fear none of that because it's all under the law of sin and death. And Jesus came and bore it in his body for you to completely set free. 
so that you can wake up in the morning, praise God, with a clear mind, go to bed at night, not worried about the mugger of the rapist, praise God. A thousand shall fall by that side, but it ain't coming out where I dwell. When Adam sinned, all death and failure, the curse, began manifesting itself on earth. Failure started in the Garden of Eden when Adam sinned. He was once in faith. There was no failure. The garden grew. The ground grew. There was no sickness, no disease. There was no divorce. There was no hatred. There was no division. There was no car wreck. There was no storms. There was no murder. There was no synonymies. All of this stuff came as a result of sin. Everything began to fail. The earth began to fail. Sin affected the whole planet. And God says, I don't want you, you in this world, but I don't want you living the rest of your life in bondage. Because fear will tie you up. Fear will stop your heart. Fear, fear, fear will have opened the door to sickness and disease in your body because all that is manifestations of failure. And when Adam sinned, all death and failure, the curse, the ground was cursed. Everything was cursed. The animals was cursed. Everything had a life expectancy. If sin would have affected, there would have been no failure. Everything would have lived forever, including man. There would have been no sickness, no disease, no accidents, no murder. There would be no AIDS. There would be no COVID-19. There would be no heart attacks, strokes, all those things. All of those are manifestations of death. But, but the whole planet was under a curse. Let me show you what he's talking about, Romans 8, 2. But when you got saved, you were under a new law. How I many of you know if any man be in Christ? How I many of you say, born again? You're a new creation. For the law. Of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath passed it, made me free from the law of sin and failure. You get it now? All of that stuff we named, you're free from it. Now that don't mean you ain't gonna have opportunities to fail. That just means it don't have no right to come on you. Sickness, disease, lack, bankruptcy, rape, murder. I mean, you can put yourself, you can violate laws and put yourself in the devil's territory. Being saved does not make you exempt from bad things happening. But I tell you one thing, like I said, failure is an event. It's not the final straw in my life. I write the last chapter of the book of my life. You know, many times we are looking at the first and second quarter in our life. And sometimes we, we write it off. But a game has never been won in the first, second. Uh, a game's a war in the fourth quarter. If you go to a play, sometime me and my wife, we would go to, you know, the, uh, uh, what is it, Tanger Center? What's the local in here? Tanger Center, we'll watch a play. Lion King, we'll go to some other place in Charlotte. We'll watch a play. And they have part one, part two, and part three. And so in part one, you might see this and that and all this. Let's just use the Lion King. And so, you know, it don't end when, when Scar you know, deceives uh, 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 um, Mufasa and kill Mufasa and Simba runs off. And sometimes it looks like our life is devastated. And while God is saying, that's just part one. That's just part two. That ain't the end of the play. You, you failed in one and two, but in the end, you're going to go back, praise God, and you're going to reclaim the pride land. And you, if you don't quit, now, you can stop here. A lot of you have stopped in part one, and part, but there's a part four. The games are not won in part this and that. Some of you have been watching the NBA Finals. It ain't how you start. It's what you're going to do in the fourth quarter. And God says, I control the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, you're going to win, praise God. You're just in part one of the play. You're just, and a lot of people stop there, and they think that failure is, was, is, is, is who they are, but it was only an event. You think I got it right every time bleeding for all of these buildings? Those, I made some mistakes, but I didn't stop there because I realized that's not the fourth quarter. 
That's not the end of the story. When you look crazy, then pay $250 for a front row seat, the Lion King, and then you impart to it at a halftime, you get up and leave. I said, man, that's a sad story. Man, God, you, you, you quit. You said, no. That's what a lot of you are doing. Because the loved ones and your family members and tell you they focus in on your failure. And because they fail, they want you to quit because they quit. But I want you to know you got a beautiful four quarter coming. I want you to know at the end of this play, praise God, we always succeed. I want someone to get excited like you believe what your pastor is preaching. I'm not a novice. I've been in this thing almost 50 years, say. I have seen some things that could have been failure in my life, that people call failure. When me and my wife, praise God, you know, we were living in the, inside the church. No, how, no, nobody knew it seemed like at that time we was a failure, but that was just an event in our life. God saw my attitude, said, this boy will preach when he ain't got no house, we ain't got no car, when his wife is working two jobs and he's flipping hamburgers. I can trust someone like this. Holly, he's not a fan. I knew that the day would come, praise God, that these buildings would be built because I would not quit. Don't quit. It's not the fourth quarter. I'm preaching to somebody right now that's facing a crisis and the devil trying to tell you you're stuck. But through death, Jesus destroyed him so you don't have to spend the rest of your life with the fear of failure. Yeah. Say, I win. I win. I win now. I win, now. I win in the end. I, win. I cannot be defeated because I will not quit. What me? Be defeated? Impossible. Everybody here know that you've had opportunity to say that fell, this fell. Don't make it who you are. Don't let it define you. It was an event. Move on. Move on. Look at your neighbor and say, move on. See, we get stuck in trauma. I love this. My wife, and I went to the war, and then so and so died. I was just talking to my wife this morning about a lot of people close to me have died that I love dearly. And I still feel the pain, but God let me know, son, look at you. I look at all these deaths around you. You're still preaching. Look at the strength that you have. You know, you thought that would take you out. You thought that grief would swallow you up. But here you are, still stay. It has made you stronger. It has made you depend on me. When your best friend, when your mom, when your brother, when all them that have gone on, that was with you in the ministry, you thought you couldn't do it without them. But you've discovered a new strength. Look what's inside of me. Strength, wisdom, and courage. Hey, it was in me all along, but I didn't know it until things were taken away. I could have called that a failure. I want someone to hear me this morning. I'm not spending the rest of my life fearing failure. Jesus delivered me and totally set me free. Taste it death for every man. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. Well, how do you get rid of fear of anything, in particular in Philly? Well, it's not by getting a bunch of money. If I can just make the money, Elon must me. If I just had Tesla, if I just owned, you know, if I was Basil and owned this and owned that, I'm glad I'm not them guys. I'm glad I ain't who I am because I'm just as much a success as any of them. Success is not measured by how much stuff you got, how much money you are, how many companies you own. Success is measured by how many people you have. Look at the people that were really, really rich, like Howard Hughes. He died a recluse. He wasn't just considered a great man. It's people that affected lives. 
that left a legacy. Not just made themselves rich. Not just had money that you so bored. You, you, you said, I'm going to build a spaceship and go to another planet. That's success. You don't like Earth? There are people, well, let me stop. See, we've got the world's idea of success, and then there's God's idea. Success is those who meditate in the word day and night and observe to do according to all written therein. And then you make your way profit and have good success. Success is those who control their mind by the word of God, who leave free, free from fear, from sickness and disease. Got all that money, but Elon Musk, they, don't, they still fear of cancer. They fear they, 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 because the fear of death is still on them. They don't know nothing about faith in God. They don't know nothing about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. I'm glad I am who I am. Amen. Yes. Quit trying to be someone else. Learn to love yourself in the fact to be satisfied. I wish I had her lip. I wish I had her knee. I, I'm glad I got the gray hair I got. Praise God. I love my salt and pepper. I'm wisdom. It looks good on me. And I'm excited. And I ain't trying to color it. I ain't trying to put no dye on it. It's who I am. And I love it. Praise God. Because it's how God made me. That's why everybody blowing up everything right now, shooting stuff in their eye, Botox, shooting stuff in their lip, shooting stuff in their hip, shooting stuff in their butt, shooting stuff they're trying to, cause they ain't satisfied with who they are. You got, oh, let me down. I ain't shooting nothing nowhere. You want me, I come as is. What you see is what you get. So I heard one preacher say, before you marry somebody, you better take your, 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 your mate swimming. Take them swimming. See what all stick and what all come loose. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to leave that alone. Because looks can be deceiving. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Come back. Everybody come back. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I don't like this. Well, you're going to have to get in the water because I need to know. Go under it. First Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. Now, how do you get rid of fear? By getting a bunch of money and becoming like, there are people like, no, no, no. Get in the house. And they never only get the big house, live in a great gated community. But people can break in and steal and a bomb can steal. I mean, fear is not eradicated because of stuff. It's nothing from the outside. It's what you have on the inside. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It's, this is going to be so simple. Look at 1 Corinthians 13 and look at verse 7 and 8. We're talking about freedom, overcoming the fear of failure. Now watch this. Verse 7 says, love beareth all things, King James, believe it all things, love hopeth all things. Love endures all things because love never fails. Now, who is love? You just got the first clue to overcoming fear of failure. God, love never fails. So I got to learn how to believe and trust the love that God has for me. I don't care what type of failure, sickness, disease, death. I don't care what's going on in my life, my job, my financial home. First thing I got to know is God loves me. Let, 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 let me amplify. I won't make it so plain. Because we're talking about God. See, charity is old English. Love, God is love, bears up under anything that comes. 
Man, when we had a bill come, we had sickness and so was diagnosed with cancer. Love will bear upon it. Anything that come against you, any type of failure, it's ready to believe the best of every. God believes the best of you. I don't care what other people are saying. Quit worrying about what everyone believes about you. God says, I believe the best. I believe you're going to make it. I believe you're going to win because I'm love. Love, God, because God is love. I'll show it to you here in a minute. It's hopes are faithless under all circumstances. Well, there ain't no hope because they wrote me to RS and said that. The doctor said I would die. No, no. Love said no. There's still hope. There's still expectation. I don't care what the circumstances are. All this we're talking about failure. Love endures everything without weakening. Our love gets weak. We get tired. We say, all right, now, you know how we get. See, we don't have perfect love. You know how we get. One, two, all right. You don't want me to go three. I knock you out. Mama said, knock you out. Love, God, never fails, never fades, or become obsolete or come to end. See, God's love is different. Love never fails. So, how are you going to overcome the freedom, the fear of failure? You got to learn to trust the love of God. She ain't about you and your smarts. You are not smarter than God. God sees the big picture. God sees the fourth quarter. Right now, you in the second quarter. You're trying to fit in. And God says, just stay with me. I'll not fail. Stay with me. I'll do it to the end. I'm not going to change. People going to change. Folks, you thought your friends, they're going to end the relationship, but not me. You're going to go through divorce, but not me. You're going to go through all these different forms of failure. Huh? But I'll still be there. So you got to begin to put faith in the love that God has for you. In other words, God is love. Put this up. And love never fails. God is love. Love will find a way. I don't care what the doctor said. Love will find a way. I don't care how much money. Love will find a way. I don't care what you've been diagnosed with. Love will find a way to get your kids to school. Love will find a way to get that thing paid off. Love will find a way. Because love never fails. And we, if we're going to overcome freedom from fear of failure, we're going to have to understand and begin to believe and put faith in the love of God and not your money, your wisdom, your resources. God loves me. I didn't have nothing when I started except the call. No one gave me a dime before one of these buildings was built. But I, was built. But I understood God loved me. And I'll do whatever if you say buy the she rock, I buy. You'll get the money. You'll get the, the steel. You'll get the first building. You'll get the equipment. It was my faith in the love of God. There was times, I, me, personally, I thought I was going to fail. But love never fails. And that fear would try to come on me. What did you break ground out there and then the people leave? Or oh, they don't give money. What? I ain't trusting the people. I'm trusting God. See, some of your faith has been misplaced and misguided. Have faith in God. Have faith. Not your bill, not your bank account, not your, your, your standing, not your 401k. Love is not going to fail me. God gave me this vision. God showed me this building. But there was time I thought I was going to fail in the family life center. Because in the natural, we were in the red, the money wasn't there. So instead of getting in fear, I would trust God. God says, the bankers might have refused you, but I am your finance here. I open doors that no man can shut. That fear would go right out the door, fear of failure. There are so many faith lessons I've learned over the years that I ain't taught from this pulpit. Because I don't come here in sad mouth. Well, I'm a human being just like you. Nobody gave me nothing. And I understand that if I'm going to overcome, live free from the fear of failure, I'm going to have to understand something about the love of God. It hopes in every situation, expectation. Romans 5, 5. Such hope 
What? Hope in God, not people. Huh? And expectation of people will never disappoint you or fail you. They lose or shame you. Why? For God's love, there it is, has been shed aboard, poured out in our heart by the Holy Spirit who is your helper. God's love is right here. And I had to understand God loved me. Love is going to find a way, praise God, to get me the money. Love is going to find a way, praise God, to get mama through this situation. Love is going to find a way, praise God, to get us out of this little church and get us in the next building. Love is going to find a way, praise God, to get my wife off of the job, praise Not that she won. My wife worked hard. I told her, I need you praying for me in the ministry. And it looked like we were a failure. Not only did we not have a house, we was in that church and there was spiders running down in the bottom of that thing, all types of crickets and stuff, and nobody knew we would have to go downstairs to warm up a bologna sandwich. And everybody, we were living in the church. Praise God. And everybody, pastor's always on time now, yeah, because I ain't had nowhere to go. And my life didn't look like a failure, but love said this is not the final chapter. We just in the first quarter, and I begin to trust the love. Love got us out of there. Love has brought us here. Love has paid off. Love, praise God, has paid this thing. Love paid for the cameras. Love paid for all the elliptical machines. Love paid for all the treadmills, all the freeway, indoor track. Love paid for the future. Why? And love will not fail. Now, my question, who are you trusting? What are you trusting? We say we're trusting God. But if you all pull out that dollar bill, we don't do what it says. It says in God we trust. But I think you trust in what God, what you're looking at more than in that God we trust. You're looking at, well, why would that need to be a fifth? It didn't need to be a hundred. No, it said in God we trust. Yeah, but I ain't got nothing. But now in God we trust. It's trying to talk to you, but no one never see that. You've been trusting in something else. And if you don't believe it, let them short you a little bit on your paycheck. <laughs> what? Let, let me go. Blah, blah, blah. I had 42 hours. Blah, 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 blah. Calm down. Now y'all better give me my money. That's how in God we trust. So you can be saying things out your mouth that's not really even in your heart. That's called a self-deceived heart. That's why you've got to get the word of God down in there. Look at 1 John. Let me keep going. I'm trying to show you the first step to getting free from the fear of failure. Well, I begin to trust in the love of God. God ain't going to let me fail. He leads me in the path of righteous for his name's sake. He told me to do this. I didn't start this. See, it's one thing you start something, but if you got a word, if God told you to get out of boat and come, you, he got you covered. Amen. Now, Thomas or Bartholomew, somebody else would have got out. God, I ain't tell you, trying something, I'm going to try. That look good, what Peter doing. They going to drown. But if God told you to come, and when you come, when the storm get raging, and when the wind stop blowing, you got to remember, you got to go back. Wait a minute. God told me to come. And even though Peter began to fail, beginning to sink, God is all. God was responsible for him. And the Bible says, beginning to sink, he always reached down and picked you up. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I'm just following God order. He told me to do it. And though he may fall, he's not utterly cast down. Why? God won't let you fail. I'm talking to somebody who need to reevaluate what you're trusting. The only fail-proof entity there is is God. Everything else is leaning upon the arm of the flesh and subject to change. You better learn to anchor your soul, your mind, and your emotions in the word of God. Because when the doctor turn and say they see terminal cancer, you need to know that love is not going to fail me. It don't end with cancer. Jesus bore my cancer. Oh, for love. First John 4. First John 4.
There are people who won't even attempt stuff because they're, they're afraid they're going to fail. God trying to move them to a higher category on the job, but can't no one run that machine like them. They've been there 42 years. And really, they're afraid of having the challenge of doing something new because familiarity breeds confidence because you're familiar with that. You don't even have to think no more. But they're trying to move you to another. God is trying to move you to a different level, but you're afraid that you might fail. And God kept moving me and my ministry and my life person a different level. And here's the key. I wasn't trying to impress nobody. See, I ain't trying to, I don't care what y'all think about me. I'm doing it when God tells me to do it. It's called paid for. I'm going to keep it till God say trade it in. And then I'm going to probably trade it in on something that's, that's, that's what you call it. Pre what? Pre owned. With the qualified, yeah, why am I going to get in if, if I could get the same warranty and pay $20,000 less? Yeah, but mine is a, mine talked to me. Well, my wife talked to me. I don't need a car to talk to me. I got my wife. Hello, how you doing, handsome? Sound like to me, you desperate. I don't need, I'll get my wife, save me $20,000, let her call me. I don't need that feature. Now, first time four. Yeah, it park itself, it do that. Oh, if do I ever do it, make it payments? Do it pay for itself? All right, now, First John 4, 16. We get caught up trying to keep up with someone else and what they doing, the latest technology. I don't need all that stuff. Hallelujah. Now, you got First John, little John? Chapter 4, let's, let's go a little deep in this love thing. Because you think if you get all this stuff and, and get in this community and this and that and, and get all the, all the status stuff. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what's going to get rid of freedom from fear of failure. Here it is right here. We just talked about the love of God. Look at verse 15. Four, 16, actually. We have known and believe the love that God has to, to us. God is what? God is what? The God hella, he is love. See, we have it. But if you don't treat me right, God is it. In other words, there's nothing you can do to make him love you anymore. Nothing you can do to make him love you anymore. That's his nature. Now, the Bible says love never fails. So who are we talking about? Love. See, our love, I'm going to show you the perfect love he's talking about. It's the only one who can love perfectly is God. Romeo, Julie, I don't care how much y'all call this, hey, Boogie Bear, hey, Pie Y'all argue. I don't care about all that Boogie Bear and Pie Face stuff. You got issues too. The only one that can love perfectly is God. Now, that don't mean we don't attempt to. We don't be kind to one another. And hugs dwell with them according to knowledge. And, w- and wives respect and honor you. And all of that stuff we do to try. But the truth is, you know it, I both know we come up short. Because there's something he's going to do, she's going to do that's going to eventually take you all what you said or not. Why you keep shaving and you put the old whiskers within the toothpaste? I got clean. Well, you'll be surprised what, you know, you dwell with them according to knowledge. It could be just your wife drinking loud. Some people drink loud. Go, 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 go. I'm like, I ain't calling no name, but when I hear that, I, I'll be back. I'm going to. Or sometimes it's just chill. You're in the bed. You love him, you ain't going to get none of what. That's just like. Go, go. Then walk up, go. My wife, I talk about some when I eat, my teeth hit the floor. And she goes. <laughs> or chew and chew and go. <laughs> That's good, ain't it? When you go. All the sweet gone yet? Okay. We ain't going to get no divorce, but I'm just trying to let you know. <laughs> Come on. We, we, our love 
it's, it can be stressed. That's why you don't know the blessing it is being single. You ain't got to deal with nobody, nothing, no tea, no crazy stuff. You can go along, stay long as you want. You can praise God, go to move. Where you been? Don't worry about what I've been. You ain't answer my phone. I ain't got to answer your phone. I'm single. All of that drama leaves. Am I being too real? So the swindling, excuse me, the pendulum swings both ways. So be, be whatever side you're on, learn to be content. Because you think it's got all these benefits, you get over there and go, oh, Jesus. All right, now. Why did I say all that? Keep reading. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. See, we're talking about lifestyle. See, we do our best to stay in that love, but it's true. Come on, now look at verse 18. There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Who's love? God is. But perfected love, see, that ain't talking about you. We just learned we can't love. That's how God loves you perfectly. He loves you perfectly, Deborah. He loves you perfectly. Carol, Carol, Denise. See, our love is conditional. And we know it, and we put, you need to do this and do that and change. God is the only one who loves us all perfectly. And that perfect love will cast out. When you understand that he loves you perfectly, and love, God never fails, you quit worrying about failure. Because fear has torment, and God love, God don't want you tormented. Remember spending all their lifetime subject to money, tossing and turning. What if you don't get the money? What if you don't come with the payment? They don't come get your house. Wait a what if those so-and-so? What if what the doctor seen is, is, is that tumor got oh, can't sleep at night. Satan torment you. Can't rest. Love. That's the only way you're gonna rid of torment. And he that fear it is not made perfect in love. Can I give you a little nugget inside of the nugget? Here's the nugget inside of the nugget. All fear, the root to all fear is selfishness. It ain't only going to be on the board. It's a nugget I'm giving you. The root, in other words, you don't fear you going to, your cousin, your neighbor going to lose their car. It's my car. You don't fear that your neighbor ain't going to be able to make the house payment. It's my payment. You don't fear that some of us kids going to get hit by a cop. It's my kid. You don't fear that your cousin or the man down the street going to lose his job. You fear you're going to lose my, my, I, my, your car, my, your children, your finance. What did that happen to you? Your marriage, your home. What did fire by that? Yo, the root of all fear is selfish. Until you get yourself off your mind, Satan is going to get in there with something. Because he's going to get you thinking about what if that happened to But when you realize, love going to take care of me. It ain't my bill, it's God's bill. God is going to keep me healthy. God is going to protect my, what about your child? God going to take care of my child. That's his business. What about that bill? God going to take, see. So you're going to be tormented. Because we're always about me, my, and I. And as long as Satan can get you stuck on yourself, fear going to get in your life because you're going to be worried about something. He's going to bring it up. What about your, what you, yeah, I know you paid your, your, your light bill, but what about your car payment? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got your car payment, but what about your child? What about that doctor bill? You know you had to take him to the doctor. Oh, and by the way, they don't have dental insurance. They're going to have to get, uh, you know, they're going to have to get crowns on their high. <laughs> See, you, you, I, I. The Satan will torment you. There's a time I had to just let all y'all, the church, everybody go. And I cast the care of you on God. Much as I love you. Even my wife. I just learned, I'm learning now. She said, we're going to drive this car to the fine. I'm just going with the flow. I told y'all about she go upstairs. She's been doing, doing stuff. And I don't even mess with her. I don't care what the color my, I don't care what it look like. It ain't my concern. I just want peace. Peace be still. I'm watching a little ESPN, I'm a little NBA, I'm happy. 
She finally said, hey, baby, what you think about this? Well, she got my picture. I got up, went in, I said, well, you need to do this. You need to take that. Now she said, that's good. I changed this picture. said, that's too cool. Much. That's too cluttered. Didn't it? And I went back downstairs and started watching until I ain't bothering I'm learning, praying. Love don't. That. See, I ain't worried about all that detail stuff. If it's not a kingdom issue, I don't care what color you do. You want to paint it? What color? She said, I want to do great. Great, do it all. I'll pay for it. We want to start. I ain't got to, It's not a kingdom issue. I just want to be anointed and help people. You See, after a while, you mature. You should learn certain things, what to deal with and what not. Certain y'all need to learn just walk away. You don't have to respond to everything they put on Facebook. Man, I can't believe she posted this. Well, if you would have been in the world, you would never seen the post. But it was about you. So there you go. Now you're tormented. Anyway, let me. You ain't going to never give the hell out. Watch. And you know what? The next verse is good too. They ain't going to put it up. Let me tell you why he loves us perfect. He said he loved us first. When you love someone, no only issue, he loved me first. He loved me when I was on drugs, alcohol, pills, quit. When I was on the streets doing drugs. I mean, when I was in the bathroom booth in the corner smoking reefer. So if you love me now, I know he's going to love me now. See, God is the only one who can love perfectly. And so if you done got married under this, this, the, this um, fantasy that you're going to have this perfect relationship, forget it. You can't love perfectly. It's the grace of God here to two married people together, if you to be honest. They just committed. They just say, in spite of this difference, that I love you. I choose to be with you. But it's going to be a fantasy. Now, the key is learning this a fantasy before you say, I do. Because we have a tendency to, to get married based off a fantasy and then reality go, pow! Come on, come on, come on. You saw this coming? You knew I was the same way before we said I knew. Well, all of a sudden you think I'm going to turn into Prince Charm. <laughs> I was a frog, I'm going to be a frog. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Unrealistic expectation. Disappointment. Love will never disappoint you. Let me, let me finish. I got hurry. So then, uh, understanding God loves you perfectly would cast out all fear. I'm almost done. Understanding that God will love you perfectly. So how you overcome fear of failure? Love never fails and God is love. And so understanding God loves me perfectly will cast out fear. So I ain't got a fear because there is no fear in love. I'm going to show you this in Amplified. We're going to go back in a minute. But I'll show you Psalm 1 and 18, verse 6. You got to understand God is for you. God is not the one that brought the sickness, the disease. He didn't bring the problem. He's not testing you. Psalm 118 says, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. See, fear, the decision not be tormented with fear is a decision. I will not. Yeah, but the bit, no, I will not. Yeah, but the doctor said, I will not. I've already made the decision. So when fear starts knocking on my door and failure about what if this happened and what if it, God is on my side and love is going to figure this out because love never fails. And until he gets the money, change the doctor report, the healing manifest, my child changed, I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to toss and turn, worried about that boy, worried about what the doctor said, worried about a bill, because love never fails. And you're not going to get me on my mind. God going to take care of me. I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. If you want to know about my bill, my carpet, go talk to God. Because he's on my side. Now, go back to uh, this in the Amplified First John, the, the, the John. And, and we've known and understand and recognize, conscious of my observation and by experience and believe, adhere to. Whew. That's thank God for the years of pastor. Because I done had some experience. God has proved himself, showed himself. I've learned. I didn't always know this. That's why I can preach it so strong and good now. Because of those experiences I've had. Now I believe, adhere to, put faith in and rely on the love. How much faith? How much are you relying on God's love to keep you from faith? Or are you relying on your, your money, your bank account? He said, we put, 
We put faith and rely on the love of God that God shares for us. God is love, and he that dwells continues in love, dwells and continues in God, and God dwells and continues in him. God is right here. God is love. There is no fear in love. Where's love? Right here. Huh? He's in me. I dwell in God, and God is in me. The Lord is on. I, I, I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I feel no evil. Why? God with me. You're right here. I see the bill. You're right here. I see what the doctor said, but you're right here. There is no fear in love. Love, dread does not exist. But full-grown, complete love turns fear out the door, and it fear, turns fear out the door. Fear needs the door. Don't open the door. And expels every trace of terror, for fear brings with it a thought of punishment. What if you fail? What if this happened? What if this? And he that is afraid is not, have not reached full maturity of love and not yet grown in love's complete perfection. See, he's talking about boy, when you understand God loves you perfectly. In all your weakness, all your faults, all your hang-ups, God still, he's the only one who loves you perfectly. So only one that can love you. That's why if a man or woman don't know God, it ain't time to get until they understand the love of God. They can't, un- my husband love your wife even as Christ loves the church. Till a man don't understand how Christ loves he he can't. In his best effort, a woman can't understand how to submit in a wife submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. She's trying to see Jesus. He's trying to be Jesus. But we're imperfect in that quest. That's why we got to be patient one to another and grow in love. A lot of people think just because me and Joseph, the first lady, no, we have challenges. We're just like y'all. But I think she done got a little smarter. I done got a little smarter. We know what not to do and say and then You dwell with one another according to knowledge. You come to our house, we ain't got some Holy Ghost smoke. Like, ooh, the pastor got an anointing. Oh, if there's any smoke, it's come my wife burns, son. Ain't no smoke in our house. <laughs> not, not, my wife is a good cook, by the way. But every night, she try to do too much. She always try to do three things at one time. She'd be outside with her con, got this, got potatoes on this. That like, just stay here. No, you turn this. I don't like to be given a responsibility to turn it nothing off. <laughs> but we love one well, another. We ain't getting no more. But it ain't perfect. The only way that, that, that can get rid of fear is understanding that God loves you. Just turn it on. Well, why don't you just turn it on now? Now, so you go to bed, turn it off. Well, what if I go to sleep? And that doesn't happen. I smell it. I wake up. <laughs> Smoke alarm. Then it's all on me. I told you. <laughs> but hey, we still together. Ain't gonna go, she ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. Why? We're still perfecting love. God is the only one who can love perfectly. Okay? Now, I'm almost done. Look at... Uh, Shilamon Korshkebe DK. Philippians 1. So, fear failure. I'm back to failure. So, love never fails. And you'll never get, until uh, you understand how, that God loves you perfectly and love never fails, you're going to be tormented with fear. This ain't going to see today. He's going to bring up something. What about this? What about that? I'll show you as, as we close real quick. Look at Philippians 1, verse 28. Philippians chapter 1, verse, I hope that you're learning something. You, God don't want you your whole life in bondage, tormented. You got Philippians chapter 1? I don't either. <laughs> well, there's two of them. I just found it. All right, look at verse 28. And in nothing be terrified by your adversary. For this is, this is to them an evident token of the perdition, but to you of salvation and that from your God. Now let's unpack this one and amplify it and you'll see what it's saying. Look at this. And do not for a moment, see fear, don't let it in. Don't give it a door. Don't let it torment you. You're not going to fail. Well, what about this? What are, no, be frightened or intimidated by anything by your opponents or adversaries for such Listen to this, constancy and fearlessness. Such being consistently fearless. 
I don't care what. I'm not going to fail. God will get me the money. God will, uh, I'm not going to have sickness disease. This is not going to fail. My marriage is not going to fail. My home is not going to fail. My finances are not going to fail. Son, when you are consistent and fearless like that, will be a clear sign and proof, a seal to them. That is your adversary of their impending doom and destruction. Satan is the one going down and he knows it. But a sure token and evidence or your deliverance, God is going to bring you out and your salvation through God. He says God will always bring you out. Don't even for a moment, don't even for a moment, don't let fear torment you about failure. What if this is? What if that is? Put, put this statement up. Satan then must get fear in your life to gain access. In other words, to be in power. Fear is what empowers. So when the thought of fear, failure, what if this happened? What if you don't make your car payment? What if... You know, your house burned. All of this stuff. What if you contact cancer? What if you blah, blah, blah? What if the kid, your son is driving, they in a wreck. What if your boy coming home from and Satan, he'll try to torment you. And, and he's trying to get fear in you just because you have the thought don't mean you fear it. Don't let it get on the inside. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be a prey. He can come with the thought, but don't let it get in you. Why? Job 3, 25 and 26. He's trying to rob you of your rest and peace. For the thing I so greatly fear. Now, that don't mean you just had a thought. That just means over and over, over and over. Now you're talking about it. Oh, I hope that boy don't have no rest. Oh, I hope we don't lose it. Oh, my God, I hope so-and-so, so-and-so don't get me. Oh, I hope, praise God, we have enough money to come up to pay for school. I hope I, you're letting that fear. Then you begin to talk about it. Speak your fear. He said, the thing I so greatly fear has come upon me, and that which is of, I was afraid has come upon me. Now watch this. Nor was I in safety. See, now you're afraid. You're tormented. Yeah, but what if so-and-so happened? What if someone break in when we go on vacation? What? See, you're not trusting angels of God. See, all fear, on the other end of all fear, there's a promise that covers the fear that you have. There's a promise that covers everything that pertains to life and godliness. And when that fear, well, what about your child? There's a promise that covers your child. Yeah, but what if you catch so-and-so say, there's a promise that covers your healing. You don't have to be tormented by fear of failure. He said, neither was I said, nor was it quiet, yet trouble, you lose your peace and you lose your fear. Now, let me bring this home. Let me bring this home. Look at, look at, I've been waiting all at 1 Kings, 1 Kings. Chapter 8. So then, you got to understand that there is no way of walking free from the fear of failure if you don't understand God loves. Because the only thing that's going to cast out fear is, is per perfected love. And I begin to realize that all of my shortcomings and all of my mistakes and all of my weaknesses and all of my not being perfect God says, I'll not fail you. See, that, that's where we think, but I did not. It ain't about that. God loved you in your imperfection. He loved you as a sinner. So what the enemy do, he'll bring up all of our resume about all the junk we've done, how many times we missed, and then use fear. Now, what? now, the greatest number one fear that Satan uses to try to bring fear of failure in our life is fear of that God's word won't work, that the promises might fail. I know God said that, but. I know God says you're healed. I know God said he'll meet your need. I know God says he'll save you in your house. I know God says no evil shall befall you and no plague will come down your dwell. I know God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That butt. See, we need to get that butt out your way. Because that's the number one thing. You know what I'm talking about. God comes in and says, the day that you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. The devil comes in and says, you won't surely die, but he challenges everything. Now, and it was so that when Solomon had prayed, made an end of praying, that, that helps. Got to keep fear out of your life. Pray. Build yourself up. This prayer and supplication to the Lord, he arose and before the altar of the Lord and kneeling of his knees, 
And with his hands, he spread up toward heaven. Watch this. And he stood and blessed the congregation of Israel. The word of life saying, with a loud voice. God ain't nervous. Blessed be the Lord that is giving rest to his people. According to all that he promised, his word, there has not failed, we're talking about overcoming fear of failure, there has not failed, not one word of all his good promises, which he promised by the hands of Moses, his servant, which is the you and I, because Moses didn't write the Bible, God wrote it, he just wrote down what God said. And not what, how many, how many promises is a fail? That's the number one fear of failure. But what if the word don't work? Not one. What if God promise you? The head not the tail. I'll say you in your house. By my stripes you'll heal. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hmm? What does God promise you? Do you know what the problem? Because the promise is what's going to get rid of the fear. That's been the problem. Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. See? The fear came when he looked at his body. Look at, look at literally your body. So look at Savior room. See, the devil, been, how much faith are you putting in the promise? Or are you putting faith in the problem? Because the, the promise is not going to fail. But what is your eyes on? And he stood up and blessed him. He prayed, then he prays God for his promise. Are you listening to me? We're coming home now. So no more fear that God's promises might fail. Rest in God's word. Notice he said he's giving them rest. He's giving you rest. How are you going to enter into God's rest? By believing the promise concerning your children, home, finances. The promise is not going to fail me. God's going to get me the money. Love never fails. But what we do is we, we say we're believing in the problem, but in our mind, we're talking the problem, we're talking this, we got a vision of losing this, we got a bit. He says, no, no more fear of the promise. That's the number one fear of failure. The, the, the word don't work. Look at Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 3. Let us therefore fear or reverence, lest a promise, uh oh, be left of us of entering into his rest. Any of you, you and I, come up short of it. Keep going. For unto us was the gospel, the word preached. I'm preaching to you now, the promises, as well as unto them. But the word preached, is it because the word don't work? No. Didn't profit them because they didn't mix faith in them that heard it. Somebody got a guard here and said, that's it. I'm leaning on this love thing. I'm not putting faith in this and that. My own resources. I'm love never fails. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, I got, got a promise concerning my children. I'm going to bleed the promise and I'm going to bed. God says, you save me and my. God got a promise concerning my finances. I'm going to bleed the promise. You can't rest if you don't know what the promise is. Huh? You're going to have fear. He says, for we which have believed. Believe what? The promise. You can't get rid of fear of failure just by not acting like it's not there. You got to go to the promise. All the promises of God are yes and amen. We which believe do enter in the rest. I ain't going to worry about my child anymore. I believe what God says. He's going to save me and my house. I'm going to bed. I ain't worrying about them finances anymore. I believe what God says. My needs are met according to his riches and glory. I'm a tither. God says he'll open the windows of heaven. God promised, praise God, to pour out a blessing. I believe that. I ain't going to bed. You ain't gonna, I ain't going to fail. I'm going to bed. I believe the word, what the word says. Praise God, concerning my healing. I know what the doctor said he's seen, but 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by stripes you will heal. Psalms 103 says he's the Lord thy God that heal all thy diseases. Exodus 25 says he'll take sickness out of midst of thee, and the number of my days he will fulfill. Psalms 91 says, well, Lord, I'm going to believe that, and I'm going to bed. And I'm not going to fail. See, we're trying to rest because we think we got enough money in the bank. Because you're living in a gated community. There are a lot of people worried in a gated community. Worry about how they're going to stay behind them gates. You better believe the promise. They can come get you, take your way behind you. Be, amen. They know where you're at. 
They got your number. So the rest comes from the what? Promise. Now, let me close with this statement, and I'm through. Thank y'all, because I don't want you tormented, and neither does God. And the rest of your life, through death, he destroyed him. They had the power of death, so they won't spend a lifetime through fear of death. Let me close with this statement. Many Christians then have failed and been defeated by the fearful phrase, what if? I mean, the devil ain't even did nothing. He just, what if you lose your car? And they go fearing that they're going to lose it. He just go, he just quest them, in doubt and trying to get you. What if you got cancer? What if you, your child, go back to school and there's a lockdown shooting, they get shot? What if you lose your job? What if you're diagnosed with cancer? What if you get it on a plane and that thing start dropping its altitude and it goes. What if you get on a track? Fear. It's always a fear. And there are people who won't even attempt because what if you start a business and it fails? What if? Fear failure. And they won't even attempt. What if you pay your tithe? How are you going to pay for fear failure? That promise don't work. She's putting pressure, trying to get you into what if? And there are people who never. Who never, unless you understand the integrity of God's word, that what if will get you. What if, Pastor, did you break ground out here and you ain't able to finish the building? You think that what if was the only thing? You might fail. But this is what I want to leave with you. These two scriptures God gave me, they're beautiful scriptures. Remember, the number one fear is the fear that what God promised you, his word won't work. The Lord gave them rest round about just as he has sworn to their fathers. Not one of all their enemies. I don't care who, if God be for you, no one can be against you. Withstood them. For the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. And there fell no part of any good thing which the Lord had promised. The promise would not fail to the house of Israel, to the church. All oh, Come on. Came to pass. Say those first words with me. All came to pass. Now, my question, are you in the fourth quarter? Are you in part two of the play? Because in the end, everything God has promised you, you're not going to fail. But we, you know what we do? We lead the play, in the, and we think that that's how it is. We, 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 we get up out of the basketball football game at halftime because you were down by two touchdowns and you say we lost. You don't win games in the first or say in the fourth quarter. Everything God has promised. That's where the integrity of God's word comes. I preached last Sunday on integrity, but you're going to, in order to understand God's integrity, you're going to have to quit lying so much yourself. You know why people struggle believing God can't lie? Because they lie all the time. And when you lie all the time, you, you, you deceive and delude your own spirit. And so when you try to have faith, all them lies come up. Yeah, but you know what? All them lies you done told and how you did. And then, you, come on, you begin to stagger at the promises because, yeah, well, now why do yeah, but you. See, a lie is insanity. I'm going to close with this one. <laughs> and behold, this day, I'm going the way of all the earth. Know in your heart and all your soul, your mind, that not one thing has failed. We're talking about overcoming fear of failure. Of all the good things, he's talking about the promise, which the Lord your God promised concerning who? You. Are you ready for this? All have come to pass for you and not one of them have failed. I rest my case. I rest my case. It ain't God. It's fear of failure about what God said. And the only way you're going to get rid of that fear is perfect that love. Not one of them. Because we didn't quit everything God promised. We had opportunities to fail, but we just called them events and we moved on. Huh? Those, for those that failure was not fatal. I made some mistakes. I invested in wrong things, lost some, but I made more good decisions in a mission. And here we are.
Everything God has promised, here we are in the building. Debt free. Debt free congregation. And I release my faith on you that there is no more failure and you don't have to spend the rest of your life because Jesus through death destroyed him that had the power of death so you don't have to spend the rest of your life in bondage tormented about failure. If you don't quit, everything that God has promised you, not one of these good promises, the word of God, cannot, not one jot or tittle of God's word will fail. Amen. Amen. You get anything? Yeah. Stand on your feet and give God some praise. I'm through.